the practice that for me has really helped reduce stress and allowed me to fall asleep more easily and control my state of mind late in the evening is this practice that some people call yoga nidra, which literally means yoga sleep. And that practice of taking 20 or 30 minutes a day, and it doesn't have to be done every day, and lying down and doing a sort of body scan. It involves some long exhale breathing, which is very relaxing to the nervous system, and really allowing the mind to enter one of these pseudo sleep states. We know from work in my laboratory and work that I'm doing with David Spiegel's laboratory, as well as work from other labs, that that state of shallow nap or shallow sleep done in waking allows the brain to, and the person, to get better at turning off their thoughts and falling asleep in the evening. So I I use both behavioral tools and pharmacology, which of course is really what supplementation is. I don't have any problem with buffering cortisol a little bit in the short term, so doing that for a week or two, but I wouldn't suggest that people suppress their cortisol long-term unless there's a real clinical need to do that. Long-term being longer than two weeks. You mentioned long exhales in the context of the yoga nidra practice. Is it fair to refer to that yoga nidra practice as also non-sleep, deep rest, or NSDR? Are those separate phenomena? Yeah, so yoga nidra is one of several what we call NSDR, non-sleep, deep rest protocols. Admittedly, I coined the term NSDR because scientists like acronyms almost as much as the military <laughs> likes acronyms. And I did it deliberately not to rob the beautiful history and community that is yoga nidra and the yoga communities of anything, but rather because many people are averse to doing anything that has a name like yoga nidra. And yet it's such a powerful tool. It's a zero cost tool that has enormous effects on not just accessing sleep and calm, but enhancing rates of neuroplasticity, something that we could talk more about. Also, David Spiegel, again, our associate chair of psychiatry at Stanford and close collaborator and friend of mine, is a world expert in clinical hypnosis. We are part of a, just in in full disclosure, we both sit on the advisory board of a company called Reverie, R-E-V-E-R-I.com. Reverie is a zero cost app on Android and Apple that has short hypnosis protocols, anywhere from 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Hypnosis and yoga nidra both fall under the umbrella of NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. And these are protocols that people can use to deliberately access states of deep rest for sake of, again, falling asleep more easily, reducing stress, but also for enhancing rates of learning of neuroplasticity. And because these are zero cost tools, and because they're grounded in excellent peer reviewed research, I feel comfortable mentioning them. And what you find is that if people who are not familiar with meditation or mindfulness, or maybe they're not from West LA or the Bay Area, um, (laughs) if they hear yoga nidra, they think magic carpets and they think, and they hear hypnosis and they think that somebody's going to control their brain. NSDR is my attempt to create a, a more friendly language, which is because all of these things are really just the same thing. They really involve two things. One, self-directing a state of calm. That's something that we never learn how to do unless we have a need to do it. We suffer some trauma, we have chronic stress, we start taking a mindfulness class. We Self-inducing a state of calm through respiration and vision is the hallmark of yoga nidra and hypnosis, and frankly, of all meditative practices. Our thoughts follow our vision and breathing, and I can explain why that is in a moment. In addition, these NSDR-type practices involve not just self-directing calm, but they also involve directing our focus to something. We generally have a hard time falling asleep because we think we have to turn off our thoughts completely like a switch. But the transition to sleep involves allowing our thoughts to become fragmented. And then we become relaxed. And then the brain enters the state where space and time are very fluid and not under our conscious control. And those are things that we can teach ourselves. So yoga nidra scripts are found all over YouTube. There's some great apps out there. The zero cost ones that I use are any of the stuff by Kamini, K-A-M-I-N-I, Desai, D-E-S-A-I. I like her voice very much. Some people, like my sister, loves Liam Gillen's voice, another zero cost yoga nidra tool, Liam Gillen, a double L-G-I-L-L-E-N. You have to find a voice that you like. The Reverie app is David's voice. He has a very hypnotic voice. And there are scripts in there for 
smoking cessation, stress and anxiety, sleep, et cetera. These, I really want to emphasize, in addition to being zero cost, are very powerful tools if done regularly. There are two papers that were published in the last two years from Cell Reports and Cell Press Journal, excellent journal, showing that a 20-minute non-sleep deep rest protocol after a bout of intense focus or intense attempt to learn anything, skill learning or cognitive learning, accelerates plasticity by about 50%. So you are learning faster, much faster, and retention of that information lasts much longer. And that's because these are sleep-like states. And we know that neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change in response to experience, is triggered by high focus, by deliberate periods of very high focus. But the actual rewiring of neurons, the formation of new synapses and the reordering of the circuitry that leads to that skill or that cognitive ability becoming reflexive, that happens in states of deep rest. And non-sleep deep rest, NSDR, whether it's hypnosis or yoga nidra or a shallow nap of about 20, 30 minutes, those things will all accelerate learning. 